Welcome to the 8 Billion Project, where we're on a mission to make an impact by discovering and sharing the purpose of every person on this planet. I'm your host, Lisa Florida. Enjoy today's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 8 Billion Podcast. I am your host, Lisa Florida. And today I have an extra special guest that I'm so excited to actually have here. I have Kelly Robertson. Kelly Robertson is a healer, psychic, light worker, way shower, and she's here to empower and teach star, star children, then awaken the masses to take back their true, our true power, then take the world by storm. That is just the short introduction to the amazing work that Kelly does, and I am super excited to have her here. So Kelly, welcome to the 8 Billion Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, and it's a pleasure to finally be here. <laughs> I cannot begin to tell you, audience, what it was like to actually, uh, how Kelly and I met, and there's such a backstory behind it, and I don't know, maybe if I should start with that, Kelly, or yeah, maybe, do, that. do you want me to do that? Okay. Yeah. So, Kelly was actually a guest on David Cowan's show. Um, he released a video on her last week, but he had done previous videos with her, maybe one more previous video. That video that he released last week was the video that was just absolutely speaking to my soul. And when I watched, when I was probably 30, only 30 minutes into the video, I messaged David and I was just like, she's speaking my language. And he was like, let me introduce you to her. And so I got introduced to Kelly immediately and we connected and the rest is absolutely history. I know. I put it in like this whole my almost like my whole life's experiences into just saying the rest is history, but may, we're gonna probably touch on all of that today because I'm super excited. Um, to have you here and answer so many questions and share your message. And that's the most important thing that I'm here to do for you today. I would like to use this platform to get your message out. And hopefully what it does is it calls out to the other people that are meant to hear this, this um, message. So there's a lot of you out there. So don't be surprised. Yeah, because that, that is our message that our mission is to get the message out and call in all of the star seeds. Awesome. So, okay, let's start with the basics, Kelly. Okay. What is a star seed then? Okay, well, to sum it up in layman's terms, it's the child that always felt like the black sheep, the loner, the one that was never understood, the one that was different and eccentric, right? We understood on a whole different level than a lot of the adults that we knew. We had this knowing in us and this calling for something greater, something better, something more beautiful. Love wasn't what it should be. And we knew, you know, society wasn't what it should be. And we knew. And so we didn't want to conform. We were rebels. Uh, we were labeled. A lot of us were drugged, you know, put on the ADHD medicines or whatever to stomp down our feelings and our opinions and our expressions, but we're still here <laughs> and we're adults now and we're still rebels and we're still fighting for changing society. That's, that's the layman's terms of what a star seed is. Now to get deeper into it, to be more um, complex, it's someone who has this very deep yearning for things to change, for people to really see each other again, to really care about the planet again, to really live in balance the way we were meant to live. And like we all understand what that means without someone having to give us a definition. We know exactly what that means to live the way we were meant to live because we don't do that. We're not doing that. This world is chaotic. It's hateful. It's dog eat dog. It's each to their own. It's vengeful. It's ugly. Lots of negative words. 
that we know are not the way we should be. Not for ourselves, not for each other, not for the planet. This beautiful planet needs us to be more kind to it and each other. Our vibration matches that of the earth. Our heartbeat is one. When we're out of balance, so is the planet. When the planet's out of balance, so are we. We are symbiotic to each other. We need to come back into unity with that. Absolutely. I mean, even just your first sentence, we were the black sheep. And I say we, audience, because for many years, I, I, you know, I am the middle child. And then there, there is the middle child syndrome. But I always knew that there was something different about me. I was very idealistic. I always saw the world from a different set of lenses. And sometimes it was too utopian for so many people. And so I right. managed that and suppressed it for many years of my life, probably right. most of my life. But at a very young age, I just knew I was different. And, mm-hmm. and like I said, there was just a series of just life events that were happening to me that kept, you know, that kept teaching me lessons and keep teaching me lessons. It was very painful. And then, of yes. course, you attribute it to what is called a spiritual awakening because you're asking the deepest truth within yourself. Is there something more to this? Is there, I mean, are other people feeling the same way? Am I the only, you almost, you almost feel like you're very alone too much of your life because it seems like very much. everyone else is flourishing and you can't get your shit together. You really I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you almost feel like an orphan mm-hmm. because no one, no one understands it. No one. You just feel very, very isolated and alone, and lost, and confused, which turns you into a truth seeker. So you, you're you always searching for those truths. And so as star seeds, our lessons are hard. Our life is a struggle. And, and that's not even really giving it the depth of how painful most star seeds life is. They really go through a lot of shit, a lot of pain, a lot of heartache, a lot of trauma, a lot of abuse. Um, I think part of that is because we are rebels and we're truth seekers. So we kind of just jump right into trouble in a way, right? We just kind of go find it and figure it out. But in another way, I think it's because we did all volunteer to come here for a specific reason, a specific event that is unfolding right now before our eyes called the Great Awakening. And so because you came here as a volunteer, you also came here with the tools and the knowledge that some people don't have. Whether you realized why or how you have them, you had them. You had this inner knowing, this this inner wisdom. And So because you have a higher learning, you have a higher level of tests Mm -hmm. and uh, lessons to learn from, you know, lessons and tests. So it's like being in 12th grade versus first grade, right? Your lessons are much more complex and difficult in 12th grade than for a first grader. And so, and that's not to put anyone down or put them on a lower or higher pedestal either way. It's simply about your level of learning and where you are as a soul. And star children are old souls. We heard the call. We know that we have to be here to save humanity and save this planet. And we all gladly went through our trials and tribulations. Well, not gladly, but To look back on it, to know now who you are and why you're here and why you went through the shit you went through, we're glad we did it. And when we came here and we volunteered, we knew we were strong enough to survive no matter what was thrown at us. And God said, yes, you are. Now go do the calling and I'm going to test you and make sure. So here we are, but we survived. We survived. We're here. We're here. (laughs) <laughs> Let me, okay, I'm just gonna, yeah, and this is what I'm gonna do because 
you know, I know this might be, this is definitely di a different podcast than I'm usually putting out. But for many of you guys that have just been my family, friends, and the audience that have just come on board, I know that a lot of you, I've spoken about it. I, I, I have a calling. And the calling I felt was really big. And, and I explain why I called it 8 billion. Now, I called it 8 billion and a lot of people said that it's an overly ambitious podcast. And it wasn't so much that I needed to do 8 billion interviews. What I understood was the message that I really had was for all of humanity. There's a light inside of every one of us. Now, it's our life experiences that will turn on that light sometimes in the darkest and, you know, the darkest hours. And what I'm saying is it, it, everyone has it. So everyone, there, right. And there is a shift. And it's interesting because when I saw Kelly's interview, I was, I knew it, like everything she had explained from uh, my, my deep love for the cosmos and astrology. I mean, she was just knocking it out in the first 30 minutes. And I was like, I, need to get a hold of this lady because once I did get a hold of Kelly, she filled in a lot of the dots. I mean, she filled in a lot of the, the, the pieces of the puzzle that I couldn't explain. And I know that there are many of you guys out there that have experienced that deep childhood pains and wounds that you feel like you were like, you're totally singled out, like, or you even ask yourself, like, why is my karma so deep? You know what I mean? When you're literally watching everyone in like, with, you know what I mean? The first thing is you're never there to compete. And hopefully where you are in your spiritual evolution, you understand that this was really for you, for you. And then once you figure it out for yourself, it becomes for humanity. It becomes for the collective. Right. Yeah. That's, so Yes. And with that, I want to just add to that. We're not singling out star seeds as, more special or more important than other human beings on this planet. Every being on this planet is beautiful and important and has the exact same abilities that star seeds have. The only difference between the two is that the star seeds volunteered to come here to help them learn how to use their own tools, their God given tools. We all can be psychic. We all can speak in telepathy. We all are creators. And so that needs to be remembered. This is not about one being more special than the other. This is about, we are the helper race. We volunteered to come here to make sure that God's plan goes off without a hitch. Wow. I know it's, a, it's, a, I, I, it's so weird because it's like, you and I have been talking, Kelly and I talk a lot ever since I met her. We talk a lot offline because it's almost like a family men member that I feel like was it's a long lost family member. And many of you guys, like I said, whether you've been following me on social media before I even launched a podcast, you knew that I went through a deeply spiritual awakening. And, and I've always had this fascination about uh, star seeds, indigo children, flower children, rainbow children, the Native American culture. Uh, I've always had a fat, the Pleiadian race. And I could, you know, I, I was just always researching it, but could never, I was just like, always wanted to know what I was. And so that's why I, that, that was a big reason why I asked to get introduced to Kelly first. I, I never knew, you know, it would lead to me getting her on a podcast right away, but I just feel the message is just so divine right now. And, um, she is, was, probably, yeah, she is rounding out my, my last episode for season two. So I am going to take a, a short break after this, but know that nothing is behind the scenes because this might be just the beginning of so many amazing things that, um, we're going to be putting out in terms of, um, messages to everyone out there. Now, yeah. Kelly, is there anything more like, um, you know, as for myself, um, I know everyone's journey was different, right? And could you help explain, like, are there differences? Because if you actually go onto YouTube or you even research, there's so many different things where people get categorized as star children, indigo. Could you help explain what all of that is um, from your knowledge and, and understanding of it? Okay, well, really, it's just a bunch of different labels. Um, at the core of it all, 
we're just souls that did all come from soul families that, you know, you said you felt like you were meeting family again. A lot of the people that I'm working with say the same thing. It's like they found their long lost mother or sister or cousin, you know, I feel like family to them. They feel like family to me because we are all family. Okay. So labels don't labels categorize things, but they also Mm -hmm. divide. And so I don't like labels because I don't want division. I feel like the division muddies the point of God's whole plan for the great awakening Mm -hmm. because it's to be, it's to be uniting us, right? We have to remove all of the dividers. So yes, we're star children, but at the same time, these beautiful beings that are here that are not star children are not simple. They're not less than, you know, they're, there, some of them are also old souls that mm-hmm. came from somewhere else or that incarnated onto this planet over and over and over again through generations and generations of time. Um, we're all special. And the, the one thing to remember about all of us that we all have in common is that we were all created. All have that spark of his light in us. We're all creators, just like him. And that, and we need unity. So, you know, you can call yourself a rainbow child if that makes you feel better. <laughs> just like somebody can call themselves a Catholic or a Christian or whatever, if that makes them feel comfortable, yeah. right? Some people will pray to Jesus. I pray for Jesus, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just a label. It's a label. But if it's what makes you feel better inside, then use your label. But if it doesn't feel good to you to have a label, get rid of it. Right. Because this is about loving yourself, learning yourself, coming back home inside of you first, having that inner standing, that inner knowing, and then we're going to branch out (laughs) and we're going to teach everybody else. (laughs) And let me just share with everyone, you know, a lot of, you know, another label too for me, right? And we, I shared this with you, Kelly, was I'm Lisa Florida, your, you know, Orange County real estate agent who has 22 years in residential real estate. Uh, to the audience, I just want to let you guys know that we come from all walks of life. I mean, you could be probably someone on Wall Street and probably be a star, you know, star seed or one of those. Or somebody that works at McDonald's. Or someone that works at McDonald's. That, yes. And that was the thing, because I always felt like I had a deeply spiritual life. I was even telling people, I almost feel like I'm disguised in, in a, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a either, you know, a light worker or a healer disguised in, in, you know, a certain profession. But, you know, as my experiences, as my experiences and my journey would allow me to be imparting, to understand the unfolding of what labels were and all that kind of stuff, I truly you know, I truly accepted this place. It's just like, until I met you, I couldn't understand like what it exactly was. I was different growing up. I saw life through a different set of eyes, you know, and that, that's the only way I could describe it. I try and tell so many friends, even just like last month, I was in a conversation with a good friend and I was just the only best way that I can explain was just, I always felt different. Um, and that probably is not a good word, but um to explain things, but sometimes the depth of the experiences, there are no words for it, you know? Right. You just, yeah. And <laughs> there's a lot of levels of, um, right. You know, and, yeah. I, and the thing is with star seeds, um, our levels of pain and trauma are usually so deep and so painful that some of us didn't make it this far, you know, some of us did commit suicide or turn to drugs or alcoholism, which then led to a car wreck or an overdose or something, you know, um, it's a very 
like we can stay here and smile and talk about it now, but the pain that every one of us has went through was very real and very deep and very confusing for us because how can someone who's so wise at such a young age go through so much pain and trauma? Yeah. And we all ask ourselves that we all ponder those questions as we're children, as we're growing up. And even some still as adults are still questioning, why the hell am I going through all of this when I'm such a good person? And it's really part of it's about the, the lessons and the, and the tests, but also part of it is about learning how to control your thought because your thought is what creates. Mm -hmm. So what you put out in the world in your thoughts is what the universe brings back to you in kind. And so my, my uh, real passion is to first teach everybody to be more thoughtful, be more mindful of their thoughts and try to push the fears and the negativity out of their mind and focus on the positive things and focus on the things to be grateful for, because there's so much to be grateful for. If we really look and I'm, I, I'm grateful for the most ridiculous things like toothpaste and my lights are working and, you know, because I know that struggle. I know what it's like to be without, you know, and so I'm very grateful for the littlest things. And every morning when I get up, I do my list of gratitudes. That's the first thing I do. And the more things you can be grateful for, the more beauty the universe brings back to your life. So all we have to do is change our thought. And it sounds so simple, yet it's so hard to do. Mm -hmm. It's so hard because you have to heal your inner traumas and your inner pain. And you have to get rid of the hate and the anger and the fear. So there's a lot of inner work to do so that you can be that person and be mindful of your thoughts and have those beautiful things come to you. But that's why I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. To help do that to help do just that. And you've been doing that, especially in the last week. <laughs> I have been so busy and it's wonderful. It's so great. It's amazing, right? To just be yeah. able to uh, connect with all these people that have had that. And I'm, I'm sh and this is exactly why I wanted to put out this podcast right away. We came across the pandemic that, you know, that started last year and literally, there was no person that was an exception to the rule. Their lives were turned upside down, right? Yeah. And, you know, it made you question, you know, whether it was your first bout of like really questioning what was, you know, what's really going on or does something feel different? A lot of things like that, they say all answers are always within. It's your intuitive gift and everyone it has an intuitive gift. It's just been suppressed by all of the structures of society, that have made us believe that this is the way, like it happens in the school, you learn yeah. the subjects, that's what is, then you keep on going to higher education, then you, after graduation, contribute by being a, you know, a really successful person in whatever, you know, life, and you just live this, you know, and then you have a family, and then, you know, you go on to do all these great things that, of course, are posted on social media as you watch so many people. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just want to make that clear. There's nothing wrong with that. But I right. just want to say for all those that didn't fall within that and you looked at things like so differently, like, oh, I don't have that. You know, it doesn't mean that, you, you know, like you it doesn't necessarily mean that you have like bad karma. There's really a reason why you have these lessons in life. Yeah. It, right. It does. It's remember everyone. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. So That's right. You always look at life from that set of eyes. There's right. always a lesson to learn in that it's for your own evolution. Yeah. Even with the um, pandemic lockdown itself, uh, <clears throat> you can, if you look at this, if you step outside of our 3D norm and look at it from above, it's really divine intervention in a lot of ways. Okay, first of all, I just want to say that corona means crown. Mm -hmm. And you know that, but a lot of people don't. 
Okay. So let's just start with that thought. Corona means crown. Now I've known my whole life that I came here for this thing that we were going to call the great awakening that would happen in my late forties. But through my whole life, I'm thinking, okay, God, how's this going to happen? How are you going to shut everybody up and make them be still and listen? Because everybody's so busy, right? They do their nine to five. They've got this, they've got that. They're going, doing this, they got their phones in their hand all the time, their computers in their face, right? I mean, like everybody's so busy. How do we ever do this? Mm-hmm. And then a lockdown happened. Uh, and global the lockdown. The whole world <laughs> literally stopped working as it normally would. Hello? Completely shut down. Completely. Hello? Yep. We were all forced to reevaluate our life, our government, the way everything is structured, the whole deal. We were all forced to look at. We were forced to look at new ways to interact with our families, new ways to find fun and joy because we couldn't go anywhere and we could not stand not having fun and joy. So we had to be creative. That's divine intervention. I mean, like every, I was telling you on the phone, everything about this, like I knew that it was supposed to happen. But I'm just a person like everybody else. I could not fathom how this was supposed to unfold. I mean, even on my own personal um, part in it, I knew that I'm supposed to reach people across the whole world because the star seeds were scattered across the whole world. And I'm like, how am I supposed to do that? But that was before the internet. That was before cell phones. You know, that was before we had computers even, really, to go all the way back. I mean, I, I just didn't understand how it would all unfold. And that may be the hardest lesson I've learned is that you can't control everything and you don't have to understand it all. You really do have to go on faith. Right. Now, I can imagine, though, Kelly, when you're talking about that, because what you're saying is like you had a special gift in, in the deep knowing of a lot of these things that were going to actually take place. A lot of us, other people didn't know. A lot of it, it was just really the, our, our journeys and whatever happened to us it actually just woke right. us up in, in the more recent times. My right. started about 10, 12 years ago, but I think the events that kind of happened throughout that 10, 12 year timeline were, were happening in its divine timing. And that a lot of a lot of the star children or star seeds, so to call it, and you know, if we if we couldn't put a label to it, it's just that you know, it's for those that are you know that are probably resonating with this video right now, and they can understand. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Spirit just told me to tell you that you all are sleeper cells. <laughs> and then I have to you like all, sleeper I have cells down because there are so many things that you were saying in your sentences, and I. And I'm like, okay, we've got to touch on that because I, I need the audience to know or describe that. But I'm saying that there is a lot of people. We know that, that we are entering into this great awakening or some people have labeled it as the age of authenticity where we're actually going to the core of who we are. As right. Human, right. They right. say we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, which I wanted to touch exactly. on say 3D. So uh, you know, you and I talk about it like it's nothing, Kelly. But do you have a great? Is there a way that you could describe what three D is for the audience? And then I'll I'll chime in and let them know my oh, my sure. Is. Sure. Uh, the three D world is simply you as a being walking around with your blinders off. Because yeah. when you take your blinders off and you tap into who you really are, then you too can see dead people (laughs) because they're not really dead people, right? Do you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like you can see the energy in the trees. You can see the energy in your desk, right? I mean, that's the difference. That is the real raw difference. It's not this woo woo kumbaya crazy shit. Like a lot of people think it is. You know, yeah. what's 3D and 5D? Are we going up there or are we staying? There? We're right here on the same plane. It's very normal. 
And it's very normal and natural for you to be able to see in the 5D, even though right now you're just seeing in sleep. You're seeing, yeah. You're seeing with tunnel vision a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Go in there and make it. I have a sick one. Oh, no problem. <laughs> this is modern, modern day podcasting. I was right. just, just going to say, oh, first century. down the stairs, <laughs> just let him. Half of this is on audio anyways. And this is it. <laughs> This is the way we're yeah. all operating. We just have to accept right. it. Like not everything has to be perfect. That's right. Because life happens. Life yeah. Happens. And and that's that's really the beauty of um, what I want to see play out with our mission is there's it's not fake. It's not props and sets and people pretending to be one way. You really are the soul that people see when they watch you. And I really am the very same soul that people see when they're watching me in my day-to-day life. I am that same person all the time. We're not fake. We're not pretending anything. There's no fancy props behind me. It's just my dining room table. I mean, I got some pretties, but you know, (laughs) yeah, it's just real. It's just real. And I think that it's very, very important for everyone to see that, that we're just real, you know, we're not, this is not unattainable, what I'm talking about. That's what I want them to know. It's not something they can't have. They can't achieve on their own because yeah, they can. God already gave it to them. They just don't know how to use all those tools they have. Yeah. You know? All the gifts that were always given to us when we were born, it's natural. Yeah. Born. Mm-hmm. yeah. And and see, that's the thing. When you were born, when we're little, we don't see the world in 3D. We don't know what the hell 3D is. We see the animals as other living beings, right? We love animals naturally as children. We love the plants. We love the trees. We see ghosts. A lot of children see to a certain age and then they're like well I used to see ghosts when I was little but I don't now well that's because society got its claws in you Mm -hmm. right and taught you programmed you that you're somebody else yep so it's all in the programming we just have to shed the program yeah I mean even I think uh, the first part of even my spiritual awakening, I was coming across, you know, 10, 12 years ago, I was, I was coming across teachers that were just like, everything is energy. You know, Albert Einstein. It is. Yeah. And it It is. is. I mean, I feel it. I mean, like you, you, you can't, in some cases you can't see it. You have to understand it from a sense in your body. It's, it's, it's around you. It's your awareness. Right. Um, Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to elaborate on that. Kelly or well, actually I do because even in just saying that some people can sense that there's energy around them, but they forget to sense that they too are energy, you know, the way that we affect the electronics, like the computers and the, you know, I can't watch a, a tragic movie on my DVD player without that sucker breaking every time because once my emotions go high, it's over. Yeah. I mean, it's done. I, I have to go buy a new DVD player. So yeah. I just gave up on watching those kind of movies because I'm tired of buying new ones, you know, <laughs> but yeah. like me and you, you know, the phone calls will drop and the, and the internet will drop because of our energy connecting and it gets so big. And I want people to remember that they are energetic creatures and that's how we create. That's how we connect. That's how we speak through telepathy. That's yeah. how mothers have a knowing with their child that there's something wrong, even if they're not near their child, because you're feeling that electric energy, you know, that, that electromagnetic pulse. Yeah. Everything has it, but we have it so much stronger than everything else on this planet. We are like walking, talking, breathing, biological antennas. We are, you know, and we're, we're, we're a transmitter and a receiver. Absolutely. Greater than anything, this t- greater than any man-made technology. That's the thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. Our energy source together collectively can power up the whole, the whole oh my God. galaxy. If people just don't realize how, how, yeah. How, yeah. 
Yes. I mean, we, it, like once everyone wakes up to their true potential, we not only can have a better world to live in, but we can actually collectively help to control the magnitude of tsunamis and floods and earthquakes and comets coming at our planet. I mean, it's literally limitless what we can do. And I know that sounds so science fiction crapola, but I mean, I've tried, I've like tested it. I am very scientific. So I have tested this to make sure that what I am telling you is real before I ever dared to speak to the public about it. I assure you it's real. <laughs> I no, assure you. Kelly. I mean, <laughs> Me and my brother have done some really crazy stuff testing our energy. <laughs> <laughs> the audience, I mean, whether you're tuning in by audio, if you were to ever just see the energy, even on video between Kelly and I, even in just our first conversations, we didn't even talk about this, but mine and Kelly's call dropped several times. But when we got back on, we were just laughing because we knew exactly. We didn't even say, oh, it's because of our energy levels. She, Kelly got on and she was laughing and I said it. I said, our energy is just too high of vibration that it's yep. even hearing in our calls yep so you have to guys, keep, if you want to pull in mine back because your your screen will freeze so i keep pulling my energy back i said kelly i just keep praying that the divine will just completely lead us to the message that needs to get out there at least even in this initial interview i mean yeah. there's so much I, I get it and i understand whoever is tuning in just know you were meant to come here and the message that you get in, in all levels. And I wanted to yes. just share that. Like, it's so crazy because like, you know, even just on this basic level, I knew that I was starting the 8 billion podcast and the basis of it is love, right? It's love, it's light, it's, it's bringing inspiration and courage. It's also letting all of you guys know out there that you have the same ability as Kelly and I do to, to manifest the biggest dreams in your life. It's so crazy, even the physical experience I'm having right now, Kelly, while I'm even talking here, because like, I feel like my heart chakra and everything right now. It's just, just so nuts. Yeah, I know. Just breathe. But, Kelly, you know, Kelly was definitely amazing. Like, I'm telling you, I have a lot of facilitators and, you know, soul family you know, on top of Kelly now. But it's almost just like, what is that? An energetic signature that you know, like it's it's family and it's home. And as you all start to reunite, because you you carry that same song in your heart, you you'll just know, like you guys get yeah. it. And we're here to assist in a lot of people, you know, awakening to this truth, you know, and and bringing everybody back home. And home isn't in heaven. I mean, it kind of is. There, you know, we do have homes out there, but home is right here. Home is us having a great big revival of the souls. Yes. And that's what the awakening is about. And I mean, like every single, literally every single person that I have helped in the past, mainly two weeks, um, all of them say the same thing. I feel like I've, I've, they feel like. Like I'm lost the very same way about them because I'm just as joyful and excited to be communing with them as they are to be speaking to me yeah. because we are family and it, I, I felt alone just like everybody else, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm very glad to be finally in this moment where nice. we're coming back together, you know? We're coming back together and we're going to teach everyone. I mean, yeah. let me go. And yeah, Kelly, you, you're absolutely amazing. Cause I said, let's just let the divine let's let spirit guide us through this. I had no questions prepared. I said, let's just go. Yeah. And I, you know, I, as an, in, as a podcast host, I'm here to create the, these questions that I believe that many people might, might have, right. And even based on my own experience, let's just take it down to the most basic level guys, because there, a lot of you guys are very advanced now, what I believe, even just understanding, you know, everyone's been saying mainstream media, like 
And I told you guys since the start or even last year, I tuned it out. And many years prior to that, I've already been tuning it out. On the basic level, though, why they say don't watch mainstream media, a lot, especially from the time that the pandemic hit and all this kind of stuff was, was and I'm not saying that it was geared, if you start to understand how your emotions work, if you are in the lower dense energies, and when I say that, it's fear, right? It's being, you know, being in scarcity. It's not, you know, it's not... It's everything that we were all feeling as we didn't understand what was happening in the world. Now, higher energies are everything of happiness, of joy, all of that kind of, you know, all of those kind of emotions that like bring things to you. That is the emotion that creates, right? Those are the energies that create. And then collectively, as you put that out, you know, in your everyday life, whether it's the people that you work with or the people you interact with or your family members and all this kind of stuff, that holds a collective energy and space. And so yeah. that, you know, in that basic level of just understanding, there's lower dense energies, those that don't make you feel good, and then there's higher. But there's also, I know, it's, you, it's not just a light switch you can turn on but you have to kind of move with it first as well. Like move out of those lower dense energies slowly and start shifting the way that you, that, you know, every, your environment. And then from that momentum will start taking you into those higher energies. So it, it's, it's a work in progress. And I just want you guys to know, it's not just, oh, they, you know, like they woke up one day and they're just being so spiritual and foo-foo and gurus here. It, it was a whole... It's a process. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would be your advice? Let's just say someone was brought onto this podcast or was drawn to this interview, Kelly, and they're maybe at this point in their life where they are questioning, you know, different things uh, like in life, like some things just aren't adding up for them. So they're at a very like this is might be like their first step in or there might they might just be looking for questions right now like what would be on that level something that you would advise them to do well the first thing i would say is to listen to your instincts where are your gut instincts leading um, if you have questions but i think for everyone uh, every single being on this planet the first thing we all have to do is to give ourselves permission to love us again. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Because society has taught us not to love yourself. Absolutely. You're not important. Do your service to others, you know, and there's nothing wrong with service to others at all. That is what we should be doing. But how can you possibly be in service to others if you don't Love yourself first. Because how do you know how to properly love someone else if you can't properly love you? Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that I want everyone to do is to learn to be in love with their self again. Embrace their strengths. Own their power. Be proud of who they are. Mistakes and all. Because if it wasn't for your failures and your mistakes, you wouldn't have learned any lessons. You wouldn't be the person you are today. None of us come here perfect. We're supposed to learn lessons. We're supposed to grow and become better at whatever it is that we're doing, whether it's trying to play baseball or be a better human being. We're supposed to be improving, you know? So the first thing I want everyone to do is to learn to love their self again. Get rid of the pain, get rid of the trauma, get rid of the fear-based negative energies that they're holding inside of them and truly just love yourself again. Because from there, the whole world opens up. Everything changes. It sure does, Kelly. I mean, you know, I when I put you on the spot for that question, I wouldn't, it, it, it was absolutely everything that I did too. And you think, and it's so, it's such a fine line because everyone's like, yeah, I love myself. Yeah, I love myself. Yet, but we really don't. <laughs> it is a very, really you have to look really deep within yourself because 
there's a lack of drawing boundaries, right? There's a lack of skewed, you know, you in know, every, in down. every, yeah, in every aspect of your life, whether it's you in a relationship, whether it's you as a parent or as a child of an older, you know, older uh, parent, <clears throat> we are constantly compromised. Even in your positions at work with your coworkers, with your friends, you're constantly compromising your own needs, your own wants for those of others. Absolutely. Which is, which is okay within reason, but we need to set boundaries and we need to stick to them. What does feel good inside of you? Go with that. What doesn't? Don't let people push you to change that anymore. Really, truly love yourself and honor you. You know, clear boundaries for yourself. You don't have to tell other people your boundaries necessarily. Just have them within you, you know, that I know I can't do this anymore. I know I can't allow people to do that to me anymore. Clear boundaries Mm -hmm. and then stay resolute with that, you know, really um, hold firm on that and be proud of it. Don't be ashamed. Don't apologize. Because you should love yourself. You should walk through life being proud of who you are and how you let other people treat you. Just as you're proud of how you treat other people. So, I mean, it's really simple, but really hard to. Because we (laughs) we all fall into that. We all fall into that. We worry that it's ego. We worry that we're being selfish. And I'm not encouraging people to be narcissistic. I'm encouraging you to have a healthy ego. Yes. Because it's, it's okay to be prideful in a healthy way. You should be proud of your accomplishments and the hard work that you've went through to achieve things. Mm-hmm. Pride is not a bad thing. But we paint it in such a negative light. You know, um, I think we need to flip it. It's that mirror thing. We got to flip that mirror. Yeah. In so many different aspects of life. Yeah. Absolutely. There is, I mean, like, this is just the beginning, Kelly. And there's, I'm so glad, like, we at least got to put this podcast out because there's so many areas to cover as to how yeah. every, you know, and because there's so many different journeys everyone is on. And sometimes yes. it's you know, yes. So there's going to be so many people that have very specific questions and you're absolutely right at that very core level. It's about loving yourself first. You have to fill your cup up first before you can fill other people's cups up. And sometimes right. you are so empty. You don't even realize because you've been in that, excuse me, you've been in that state for so long. You don't know anything, <laughs> right? There are exactly. People- in, in such a deep, low, vibrational, dense area, that's what's comfortable for you. Right. And you can't see any change happening in front of your eyes because that's what's going to... So, and manifestation is exactly that. Good or bad, it's everything you focus on. Yes, exactly. It's mm-hmm. everything that you focus on. That's why thought is so important. You need to be mindful of your thoughts. Because if you're thinking, oh, I don't deserve this new job, well, then you're not going to get the new job, right? Because you don't deserve it. In your own mind, you don't deserve it. Or, oh, I can never win that triathlon because I'm not as good as so-and-so and and they're in the competition too. Well, you just limited yourself. Yep. And we need to all remember that if we are part of the maker, well, we don't limit the maker. So why are we limiting ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we we know that with God, all things are possible and that magic does happen and that miracles are real. So why do we not believe that for ourselves? Absolutely. We believe it for other people, but yet we can't believe it for ourselves. We deserve it too. And we have the ability to create it with our thoughts. Absolutely. Let me ask you this though, Kelly. For many years, of course, there's that book, The Secret, that's been out and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, let's create things. Let me ask you, though, because for me, and I was always like, 
I don't understand. It's like, you know, I, I was always into the laws of the universe, personal development, yet I could never see. And so I also understand my journey coming up this far, right? Because it was there to assist me in my little vehicle so that I could be who yep. I am today. But when I found true alignment, it was not only the thoughts that I kept in my mind, but it was when my heart and my mind truly became aligned. I think that when they match in my own eyes, that's the missing link because you can, your mind can be somewhere, but if your heart doesn't believe, and I could never figure out the concept for so long because I yeah. want to be in my mind and I dream big. I'm a Sag, you know, I'm, we're like the explorers of the universe. My dreams were so big yet. I think my heart was so in the wrong place that I couldn't manifest those big dreams. So what are like, what would you say is advice for, is it again, going back to loving yourself, just really yes. taking time for, to make your, to make your thought process and your heart start aligning. Yeah, that's exactly what it is because, well, first of all, your heart and your brain are both electric. We all know that, right? Your heart actually has more electricity than your brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they're both electric. So it, you can think in your brain, I deserve better than this. I'm a good person, but in your heart, are you loving yourself? Do you right. really believe you deserve that in your heart? And until they're in alignment with each other, it's not going to work the way that you want it to. You're going right. to be creating other things, whimsical things, flimsy things, right? You're still yeah. creating. It's just not in its full power. But when you connect those two very powerful electrical devices that are within you, bam, magic. <laughs> exactly my life. I was just like, magic happens. <laughs> and it's effortless. It's effortless. All you have to do is be in alignment within yourself. Know yourself. Love yourself. I mean, Jesus told everybody. Love thyself. Know thyself. We didn't know what the hell he meant by that. Or you guys always out there, audience, right? You always hear all the answers are within. Oh, yeah. Right. Are all the answers within? They are within. They, but really they are. are. They really are. They are. Yeah. Because you, you listen to your gut and your instincts and they'll guide you. That's your, that's your inner knowing. That's your higher self. That's guiding, which always knows the future before it's happening. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, like this. Yeah. You tell me, I was like, yeah, we know. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> Kelly and I will just be like, even before anything is even said or thought, we, it's connecting for us inside. Right. We, you'll, well, we you can see sentences happening in, in camera right now. <laughs> yeah. Then, finishing and I finishing each other sentences and stuff. Right? But yeah, I'm all like, I'm finishing your sentence in my head right now. And, yeah. like, and, and I just want to let the audience know that sometimes, like when you say, like, I deserve better, right? Mm -hmm. And then your heart believing it is also following the actions of what it is. And that's not always going to be the easiest process. Some people are in abusive relationships. True. They're in abusive relationships and they don't know anything better. So their physical body keeps them there, but their mind is already saying like, you know, I, I deserve better. The, yeah. the action that needs to be taken is if you are in a very toxic relationship or abusive one for that is being able to walk away. Of course, right. the means of that, you know, because your physical body doesn't know anything better other than that. So that's what's familiar. The thing is to take the action in a different direction for you to see the different changes that will occur. And it's not easy, but I'm telling right. you, it's very, it's very rewarding if you take if you take that leap of faith and just do something. Yes, and not just not just is it rewarding, but <laughs> And like, this should speak to everyone that I'm, that everyone that's watching at this moment, when we have the, the, the will, when we set our mind to something, we can move mountains, right? Mm -hmm. So you could be that battered wife that's in the abusive relationship and maybe you don't have your own income and your husband is the sole supporter and you're sitting here watching us and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, well. I know I need to get out of this relationship, but how the hell am I supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. 
Once you make up your mind that that's what you need to do, the universe is going to hear you and it's going to help you get out. Trust that and everything will work smoothly. Yep. Smoothly, simply, and quickly. And I promise everyone watching, it is just that easy. I know it for a fact. For a fact. I have learned so many different lessons of walking blindly, faithfully with God. And every time I align to deserving better and living at my highest good and my highest vibration, this universe never lets me down. Ever. It always gets you out of those bad situations and with ease. And most people are like, how did you do that so well? And I'm like, I trusted the universe. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. It is, in, in, in a way, though, too, when you say universe, it's almost you're trusting your inner guidance system, something beyond anything your eyes can see. That's why they say your answers are within. It's just people yeah. get, you know, it's those, it's fear, right? Mm -hmm. All of right. those your logical mind that are telling you, you cannot make it. Like, I don't know how I'm going to support myself. I don't know. I, you know what I mean? But right. that's what you're yeah. saying. Once you make that decision, the universe conspires to bring it for you. But exactly, you take a different action. Remember, you're just telling the universe something else. So now it's recalibrating. Exactly. You're going back and forth. Right. Because what is the universe? Okay. When I say the universe, I'm really talking about the energetic karmic soup that is all around us. It's really like um, electrical feelers for our thoughts. It's there as a servant to us to bring us whatever we want and provide it to us. Because that is the way that God put everything into motion. We are the conductors of the orchestra. The instruments simply answer to what we tell them to play, right? Yeah. So if I'm saying the universe brings me this or that, it's that cosmic soup that's listening and, and giving feedback to my requests or my commands, mm -hmm. right? And it's, that's another thing um, that I just want to touch on with people and this is not meant in a you should be disrespectful or egotistical type of manner. But a lot of people just simply when they pray, they beg for things. If you are begging, you don't feel like you deserve it. Mm -hmm. You're waiting for something or someone else to decide how important you are. And I want everybody to change that thought. When I speak to God and I pray every day, I meditate every day, I pray every day. But when I speak to God, I tell him what I need. And then if it's not what I need, he shows me. <laughs> he shows me. <laughs> you know? Because I'm you are. But I speak, but I, yeah, but I speak what I think I want or need in that moment. And then, and that comes to me. And it either fulfills me or it shows me that I should have been more careful with my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I should have been more choosy with what I needed. Or, <laughs> let me ask you guys, right, in the audience. You know, I was like, I can't wait to get all the comments, right? You asked, yeah. you stress tested. Have you ever, in anyone in the audience, have you ever experienced like, oh, I need to do this or I need to get this? And then you just release it out into the universe. You totally forgot about it. And then somehow it came to you. You didn't know how it was going to come to you, but it came to you. And that's, that's, a, you know, that's an example too of how, how it works. Right. I remember in Jan of, what was this? November of 2019, we had just came, came back from Japan with my family. And I said something, I said something like, Oh, I need to go visit the Philippines. I said that because remember, that's where, you know, my parents, my father was, you know, living at the time. And I just, the thought just dropped. Uh, Christmas passes, my dad, my dad stays with me during the holidays, Christmas passes and all this kind of stuff. 
And interestingly enough, we were getting rid of the Christmas tree. And my dad thought that it was the best idea to chop it in half, right? And he, he was chopping it, chopping it, and while well, his leg got lodged, and then he fell back and hit his head. And what oh, ended up I know it was really, it, it was really unfortunate situation, but I'll, I'll tell you the story behind this. Well, he was set to go when he fell. then, you know, I, I called 911. I almost actually thought I lost my dad during that time, but I was so, you know, it was unfortunate that happened, but I'll tell you the, like I was saying, I was moving towards the story. He ends up falling. Uh, he lost like some movement in his body, but after they, you know, he went into the emergency, they did scans and all this kind of stuff. They're like, Mr. Florida, you're actually for what what's happening right now. You don't have like feeling in your body, but it will all come back because, you know, they did all the scans and nothing was was hurt. But the thing was, he was scheduled to leave for the Philippines in the next two weeks. And then I was like, he can't do this physically on his own. And he really didn't want to go back to the Philippines. And interestingly enough, that's how I ended up going. Now, I'm not telling the audience that it has to be a, a tragic situation like that, but that's how powerful your minds are. You know what I yes. mean? Like It will deliver to you in such a way that sometimes it might not seem that it's there, but you, you'll be redirected in, in such a way and you won't understand it until you look back and understand why. But my trip to the Philippines was very important because it almost became like that Traject. I mean, it became that thing that catapulted me forward because that's where I ended up getting on on a live stream and starting this whole thing. This even this whole podcasting interview wouldn't have been wouldn't have been possible if I never started live streaming to the Philippines. And this is where I am today. So I look back and understand that every moment was truly designed for us to like kind of embrace whether it was painful or not in understanding. Right of how life unfolds right because we're all being led to our purpose yeah but and sometimes that is through unfortunate experiences mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's interesting I mean like Kelly I knew this was gonna go like longer than an hour and all this kind of stuff and this is we are just scratching the surface yeah <laughs> you know, I, yeah we've barely covered any ground on it but at least yeah, we, we got just the, dropped a little tiny, you know, right. dot in the ocean. I mean, I, I'm even almost allowing it, whichever, you know, for me, even as the podcast host, I know typically I'm designed to ask the questions. I, I have everything from, you know, the, the connection to the cosmos or to the Native American culture to what are things of like, what is the great awakening? What do you think like for us, like in these next few, you know, I don't know, maybe... 10, 15, maybe half an hour. What do you feel like in this first podcast interview, would you, would you feel is important to, to touch on? Because I, I'm at the end, we'll talk more about where Kelly and I might, might actually the direction in which we might be taking this. Cause we just don't believe it's just a podcast interview at this point. <laughs> yeah. We're just kind of, just kind of getting our feet wet right now. But um, I think I really want everybody to understand that, the whole purpose of the Great Awakening is to realign the beings of this planet with the earth, to, to bring us back to nature, to bring us back to pureness and wholeness and real joy and real happiness. And this is not like some bull, bullshit new age stuff. This is, this is God's plan. This is really what God wanted for us all along. And people that are star seeds volunteered to come here to make sure that this happens because it's no secret. There are dark forces on this planet that have been keeping us enslaved, keeping us trapped, keeping us in chaos and keeping us from our true nature, our true joy and our true highest good. And so the, the seed, the star seeds, the volunteers, we came back here to make sure that this goes off without a hitch. Right. Now, let all me ask. For all of us. And for we don't deem ourselves, we do not deem ourselves more special than any other being on this planet. Not at all. 
we actually love these beings on this planet so deeply. I mean, I'm an earthling now, so I love these people just as much as my own family, right? This is my mankind is, is who I am, right? So I want to see it succeed. I want to see it flourish and in the proper way, not with the 1% being our overboards, not with all of the poverty and destruction and chaos and hunger and homelessness that happens on our planet now and the war. And, you know, it's unnecessary. It's all unnecessary. And we really can collectively change the world. Yeah, I believe we that. really can. I truly believe that. I mean, this, that's what I'm saying. I was like, Kelly, I mean, for some people, people are going to ask what the great awakening is. Is, is, it, is it a form of, you know, I understand what the great awakening is, but like, is it, is it something inside? Is it a shift that happens inside? Are we going to be able to see it with our own eyes? Is it the very structures that are in place right now? Is it, could you? you, You've been told your whole life. Every one of you have been told your whole life that veils would be lifted. That you would have new eyes to see. That is in every aspect that you could possibly imagine coming into fruition. You're getting, you're, you're unveiling who you are inside of yourself. You're unveiling who the politicians truly are, who the religious leaders really are, who the teachers really are, who the scientists really are, who the doctors and pharmaceutical companies really are. Everything is being unveiled everything we're peeling back all the layers of the onion all the way down to the center and you're at the center and i'm at the center and who we are as beings and creators is what's really going to matter about all of it and when we can get back to who we are as a being and remember that we are a spiritual being having a physical experience and not the other way around Mm -hmm. And we all come from a a place of a heart space, pure love. And it changes everything. It changes everything. It provides you the free energy. It provides you the cures for terrible diseases and prevention of. It brings us the technologies that truly do heal you that come from sound and light because they do heal but they don't, they don't allow us to have those technologies at this time. Yeah. This, this is a time for taking all of the shit and getting rid of it. everything that doesn't serve us. It's time to get rid of it. That's what the great awakening is. Yeah. We're learning the truths. We're going through the trenches. We're cleaning out the closets and we're throwing out all the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing we're going to experience this in our lifetime. In our lifetime. That's why we're taking the world by storm. And I, yeah, Kelly, it was just, I, I'm speechless, guys. I've been speechless for the last week, you know. And it was just, I, like I said, it was almost like Kelly filled in the puzzle for me of, of things that I always like to, always had deep in my heart, like of this utopian society. And I know a lot of you guys are, I know this is going to be questioned, you know, there's no doubt about it. There's, there's no doubt about it. it. I'm sorry. It should be. It should be. And that's what I was just going to say, Kelly, question everything. The science channel tells it to you. Like that was what I, another thing I was telling Kelly. (laughs) We did it again. I would watch, what is this? The discovery channel and the most, what you know, I'm thinking most people would think was boring, but I'd watch all these planet shows and I'd keep them on all night. And I was just so fascinated with the cosmos because there's just things that, and literally, I know now why I was so fascinated with the cosmos. There's just so, there's just a vast universe out there. We are just like, yeah. Yeah. You know? And yet, you're, and yet, we're so important. This, the, the beings on this planet and this planet alone are so, so important. So you see, 
in a way, it's a weird thing because we've always been taught that there's no other life out there and we're the only egotistical things that could possibly be alive, which is crap, right? Total crap. But then on the other hand, there is life out there. But the life that was brought to this planet, this beautiful, complex, plentiful, bountiful planet, Mm -hmm. we were brought here for a reason. This is like the Eden, right? Of the cosmos, the special little place, the little perfect Goldilocks planet for all of the souls to grow and thrive on. So we are special and we're on a very special planet and we need to come back to remembering that and be passionate about this beautiful planet we were given again. Really be passionate about it. I mean, could you, could you explain that a little bit more like, um, you know, you and I have had the the side, you know, the side conversations about, you know, why, why earth, why us, why humanity? And you're talking about that thing with Einstein. Is that Einstein? Or said, remember? So that Einstein we, said yeah. we would be going through the dark rift of the Milky Way. And that, that once we get into uh, the most dense of the stardust in the dark rift of the Milky Way, that it will merge the right and left hemispheres of our brains and force everyone to be more aware of their psychic ability. Um, So there's no stopping this. There's no getting around it. Even the people that don't want to question and don't want to believe what we say right now, it doesn't matter. They're going to become evolved, whether they like it or not. Now, at that point, they're either going to freak out or they're going to be looking for people like me and you to explain to them what the hell is going on. (laughs) Because they're going to be freaking out. But um, as far as us being on a special planet, I don't know why Earth was chosen to be this, but I know that it was chosen. And then, you know, there's a whole discussion about the moon. I personally think the moon was put here to, to make sure that the Earth was the perfect balance that it is. You know, between the sun and the moon, we've got the tides, we've got the emotions, we've got everything. And people's emotions are very tied to the moon. So artificial or not, that moon affects us. I'm very sensitive to moon cycles. I am too, especially the new moon. The new moon actually bothers me more than the full moon. The new moon does? The new moon, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I really had it during the Scorpio full moon. I was like, what is this? I was was intense for a whole week. (laughs) Yeah, it was intense. But this new moon is, um, it was very emotional for me. <laughs> it was very emotional. <laughs> but um, what was, we, it, the, was it a Libra full moon? Uh, Might have been. Does it go I don't remember what it was called. I'm not real good at that part of it. <laughs> I don't know. But um, it, yeah, I don't know why Earth was created per se, like what the whole reason was to begin with, why it was created. But I know that it's a very special place. It's not like some experimental zoo, like a lot of people, you know, um, Linda Moulton Howe and different people have suggested that maybe it were like some big zoo, some big experimental place. And I don't think that that's why it was created. Now, yes, we've kind of turned into an experimental zoo because, you know, there are, different alien races that visit our planted planet and tinker with us. So, um, you know, we've gotten a lot of, uh, DNA from different races at this point. And that's all I'm going to say about all that right now. You know, Kelly, I think that we covered at least at the very basic level, like an introduction to this and, and and on a very, you know, on a deep level too. whoever called to watch this, just know you're here for a reason, whether you completely understand this, you know, whether it completely resonates and it calls to your soul, or you're just like, what the heck is this? Right. Right. (laughs) You and I both know there's a reason you're watching this. Yeah. Yeah. And there will be there will be people that'll look at it like this is just crazy talk. Yeah. These zeros are crazy. okay. That's okay. Because the ones who believe that it's crazy talk, it's not time for them to learn anything yet. Mm-hmm. Not about this. 
it's not their time to hear it. Because if it was, they wouldn't, they wouldn't look at it as crazy talk, you know? Mm-hmm. They wouldn't look at it as uh, a negative aspect at all if they are meant to hear it. And they're not the people that I'm talking to yet. Yeah, right, yet is the key word. Yet. Yeah. And, and like I always say, I always hold space for everyone's journey. Every I'm, Exactly. I was there completely like, mm-hmm, and then all of a sudden, just yeah. sometimes it's a ton of bricks. Sometimes it's just a thought. Sometimes it's yeah. different for everyone. It's, right. And it's incident could be different. Right. And it's time for the star seeds to wake up first. And, um, I've, this has been a common theme in conversations that I've had in the past couple of months, several months, is that just twenty, the year 2020 is when it really hit them and they started waking up. That's, that's when it really started clicking for everybody, all the star seeds. So that's who I have to, that's who I have to call on first is the star seeds. And if they're waking up on their own, then they're not looking at your podcast as something crazy, you know, and um, they're meant to hear it and they're meant to be honed and awoken more deeply and evolve more fully. And that's my job is to help awaken first the star seeds and then the rest. And some of those at the very end of this, may not necessarily be waking up willingly. It will be forced because sometimes things don't change unless they're forced. And that's not me forcing it. (laughs) That's not me forcing it. I'm not saying I'm doing that. That's God's plan Mm -hmm. because God has a very brutal way of waking us up. Even when we don't want to. Yes. Believe me. I know. Yeah. 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 It's our choice how easy or hard the lesson is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. And, but really sometimes is. you could be completely oblivious. And then the last one, the inner is like, okay, she's got to get it. She's got to get it this time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it births something completely beautiful. I mean, of course it was not, the passage was not fun, but. Um, right, never. <laughs> yeah. It's never fun, no. It, but it's, it's been amazing on so many levels. I, you know, it's, it's why the 8 billion podcast is here today, you know? Yeah. And I'm so glad that you've given me Kelly. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've given me this opportunity to one, put the pieces of the puzzle together for myself to really be able to now step into this power and share it. And I just can't wait to do some amazing things together. We will. We're we're going to do some really big stuff. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> now, no pressure on anybody. But we're going to do big things. Now, Kelly, let me ask you because, the, like you said, right now specifically, um, whether some people like see this and it's completely out of there, but you yeah. are for the star seeds is there i mean is there a reason like you have a message for them as to you know why you are looking for them why the time is now or is it just knowing that you have have you been called to say something by spirit the star seeds have to be awakened first because they're the ones that are going to hold space for everybody else until they figure this out we are the light workers we are the healers we are, we are the way showers. So they have to be awakened and caught up to speed before they can be of assistance the way that they were meant to be. You volunteered to be here for this. I volunteered to be here as your teacher. That's the difference. You have your own job, your own mission ahead of you. I have my own ahead of me do it if we're not awake we can't do it if we don't know how to use our tools Mm -hmm. so i have to reach my star children family first and show them how to use the tools that god gave yeah 
And then we're going to go forward and we're going to teach everybody else how to use their tools and own their power and love their self again. And we're taking back our damn planet. <laughs> right? Right? Mm -hmm. That's simple. We're taking the world by storm. The storm is upon us. And there is no stopping it. And I know some people will relate that to Q quotes. And that's not where this came from. Actually, I think they must have known a little something about star seeds theirself. That's my opinion. Well, who, who knew something about star seeds? Can't say it without being censored. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. We're not you know, going look, in that direction, Kelly. <laughs> the, the number 17 people, right? The letter 17, you know what I'm talking about? The 17th no. letter of the alphabet. People. Oh, they make comments that are very similar, if not the same, as what I've always been told my whole life by spirit, that the world as we know it will change and that nothing can stop what is coming and that the storm is upon us. I mean, they use quotes, the Great Awakening, for God's sakes. A lot of people didn't, didn't know what that was until they started following that particular anon, you know, and... Um, that's not something that certain other people can patent because that's God's title, the great awakening. Yeah. I've known it since I was two, you know, and it was 1974 when I was saying it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what, you know, Kelly, that it's true. We, we're going to, we're all coming from all different walks of life in all different industries and sciences and business, we're here, yeah. we're all here to play a role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody's just been like spirit said at the beginning of this sleeper cells, which I think is a terrible term, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't argue with the boss. The, um, oh, yeah, that's right. Cause you didn't mention it at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. You were referred to as sleeper cells. But, but it does make sense because everybody just walks through life thinking, oh, I'm just this or I'm just that, right? I'm just a housewife or I'm just a mechanic or I'm just whatever. <clears throat> and they don't realize that they're actually important, even though they've had a knowing their whole life, that they understand things in a whole different level than most everyone around them. Mm -hmm. So, And those are the people that are going to be listening to this and go, oh, I am a star seed because I am just a mechanic, but I've always known. I've always known the way we should be doing things and nobody else around me could understand. And I've always known that conspiracy theories are not really theories. They're facts, right? I mean, like they know these are people that know they're wise people, but mm -hmm. they also just look at their self as limited. I am just whatever. So you were sleeper cells until 2020. And then everybody started to wake up. Until 2020. There was, there was a wave of us in 2008, 2010, 2012. There was a wave of us. And then yeah. in a way, like I was, I think I explained this on, on someone's, I think on David's channel or interview, like I just went through this period again that I it kind of, you know, you go back in and then yeah. like, your time is coming. In 2019, like I was just saying, I couldn't explain some of the events that I just, you know, I, sometimes yeah. I, I would have to elaborate on it, but it was just everything from just like all, everything your senses pick up, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and then it just became so heightened. And then, uh, you know, and then another path of a dark you know dark night of the soul and you and you can believe me you can have waves of that but there are going to be the ones that really like that wake you up like yeah they were necessary to get you to where you're at today today on what like may what is it may 17th <laughs> they were all necessary events and obstacles and ebbs and flows to make you exactly who you are today on May 17th, 2021. Absolutely. You are exactly Everyone. who you are supposed to be. Yes. Yeah. 
And, and that's why the huge influx of waking up in 2020, because what is 2020? It's perfect vision. Mm. 2020 is perfect vision, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we all knew, we've all had this feeling inside of us, something's coming, something big yes. is coming. We just don't know when, we just don't know what. That's exactly what was happening. And this is going to be it. And then nothing happened in 2012. And they're like, okay, what's going on? Except for that big uh, movie, 2012. Right, except for the movie, that, which was really quite devastating and destructive. I know. <laughs> but that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, they put that in our minds. Like, the fear of these different things that are happening. Like, you know, it, that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, some people, you know, you need to yeah. remember what you focus on becomes your life and your reality. Absolutely that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was a great we first need to be focused. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I think so. I think we did pretty good. Yeah, no, it was. No, I mean, like, like I said, um, you know, I just genuinely wanted to thank you for allowing me this interview with you. Of course, that's one. But also um, helping me because I knew that I needed to go down this. I, I knew that the work that I continue to put out with 8 billion needed to go down that spiritual route. And it's not to, it's not to say anything about my pot, you know, like my past podcast guests or even, you know, like the future that I, that I have, it's just more me being able to step into these series of like uh, teachings or go down this road that truly is like very passionate for me. It's, it's easy. Honoring you. Huh? Honoring yourself. It's honoring myself. It's yeah. honoring myself at the most authentic level. It's why I started 8 billion audience. And, and there's just going to be like more amazing things. And like I said, Kelly has her YouTube channel. Like Kelly, if people have tuned in on this and would like to have either answers from me or like to support you, how, what's the best way? Or they feel like, they are a star seed and they'd like to get a hold of you to ask you more questions. Uh, could you share with us how they'd be able to do that? Sure. They can go to YouTube to my channel, which is called Earth Song, two different words, both capital letters, Earth Song. Or they can reach me by email at earthsong747 at gmail.com. Um, I am here in service to humanity. I'm a very busy lady, but I am always managing, God willing, I am always managing to accommodate everyone who seeks me out for help. So no one is getting left behind, and we're all getting through this together. Um, I don't charge for my knowledge like a lot of people do. Um, And I'm just going to leave that comment there because I have a lot to say about that. But my opinion is knowledge should be free because knowledge is power. And if our true mission on this planet, my true mission definitely on this planet is to truly free you. Absolutely. So that we can take back our planet. So why would I charge you for that? Mm -hmm. Because it benefits all of us. So I don't charge. I do take donations. Um, I've been very blessed with beautiful people who are helping me through Mm -hmm. donations. And um, I'm just blindly walking into this like everyone else and fulfilling my part of the mission. So I look forward to the emails that I get. And I look forward to the comments on my YouTube channel. And I look forward to our journey together. Absolutely. Likewise, I feel absolutely the same way. It's just been amazing and divine, truly divine. Um, yes. Really, yeah, it really makes my heart sing because I'm telling with Kelly, you know, sometimes, not that the journey wasn't lonely, everyone, like I have a team with 8 billion and amazing, but it was just like, I was always praying because I was like, please God, I'm like, is your message coming out through my work? And yeah. please, with my soul tribe and my soul family in place. And, uh, you know, the, 
there is, I have, I have this amazing group of people, women that support me and encourage me and men in my life. So it's, it's been amazing on all levels. I could just really feel the energy now that it's what we're going to start seeing in these next coming months are just going to be absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everything that I'm doing is completely on a selfless level, but I have to admit, um, it's been quite a pleasure for me to finally meet my soul tribe. Yeah, I agree. It yeah. has been, right? <laughs> I talk about it all the time. It's like, it's home. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, thank you, Kelly, for actually being a podcast guest on the 8 Billion podcast. Um, for everyone that has tuned in, I just want to say thank you for this. This is a very special uh, interview for me. And this will not probably be the first as I might actually continue to do a series of work either with Kelly or teachings that we feel probably are necessary to put out there for all of you guys going through your journey. And so again, um, this will probably wrap up my season two, but it's, did you want to say something? Yeah, real quick, I almost forgot. I wanted to tell everyone uh, real quick that I'm going to be putting together um, roundtable discussions where the star seeds can actually collectively get together and meet each other, not just me or you, but all of them being able to meet each other because we need to see each other. We, we need that humor, human interaction again. And hopefully, God willing, one day we can actually start doing in-person meetings with everyone. But we're going to start doing like Zoom meeting roundtables with Star, Ch Star Children. Okay. So are you going to, Kelly, are you going to be posting that um, probably on your YouTube, right? Like maybe in your community page or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I also have a Facebook group that's called um, Earth Songs Spiritual Lovecraft. If anybody wants to join the Facebook group, we do um, exercises there to practice honing your tools in your toolbox. <laughs> nice. So I will, I will actually put that down. If, if you're catching this interview on YouTube, I'll put it down on the description. I'll gather all that information from Kelly. And then again, um, she's already, if this, if you guys are tuning in through audio, um, Kelly has already explained how you can get a hold of her, but um Yes, like I said, this might be just the beginning of the first podcast interview of a series of either teachings or other things that we're doing. So please stay tuned. Um, there's even talks of us maybe even going live. So I've got to talk to her about that offline first to see. And you know what? If we do go live, that's I have that feeling though, Kelly. Um, that's how I started. And I, I have that feeling now. Interestingly enough, life is coming full circle because what I did live streaming has really got me into here. And so I'm very comfortable live streaming. Right. <laughs> we'll just see where this takes us. Anyways, audience, thank you so much. Good, my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, 8 billion audience, thank you so much always for the love and support um, and for tuning into this special episode. Again, I'm just going to take a short break. So always stay on my either... YouTube page or Instagram, Facebook, or all those different places as I give you updates of how season three is going to start to unfold. So again, thank you so much for your support for season two. And um, I will catch you on the first episode of season three for 8 billion. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If it's moved you in any way, please review and share your thoughts or text me your thoughts at 949-247-2800.